Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program. We are currently in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1, though uh, what I have here should work in 1.3.1 onward, hopefully. Uh, but as you can see, I've decided to make the F-100 and I'm going to continue making the Century series of fighters, F-101, F-102, F-104, 105, and 106. Uh, I don't know if I really need to do F-106, it's really close to the F-102, but we'll think about it. Uh, so yeah, basically I made the body in Blender, also the wing and the vertical stabilizer. Otherwise we've got B9 procedural parts, these control surfaces, and that all moving wing for the, for the horizontal stabilizer. And the engine is configured by uh, Advanced Jet Engines already. I forget which model it is, I don't know if it's a stock model or something like that. Um, but it's configured by AJE, as you can see by the prefix there and it is the right engine for this plane. Uh, it's just a stock landing gear down there. So yeah, let me just quickly show you how I put it together. And so typing in F100, because I'm gonna link the parts in the video description as usual. Um, they are not finalized uh, and you'll see why when we take it to flight, but the F100 body and then we've got the vertical stabilizer. I didn't put nodes unlike some of the other planes that I've made. They just surface attached this time. And that does cause a little bit of a problem on this one. You're going to have to rotate it. And tweak its position a little bit. Uh, that's actually pretty okay. And um, then the wings. This time, previously I had done the left wing and right wing separately. But the wings of the F-100 are basically symmetrical, top to bottom. So I decided to just make it possible to apply them in symmetry. And obviously you're going to have to do control surfaces on your own. But that does simplify making the control surfaces because otherwise you have to do it for each wing separately. And I think uh, the wing is higher mounted, sort of in line with the US Air Force uh, tag in front. I didn't put the tags on the wings, sorry about that, but that allowed me to make it possible to apply it in symmetry. Uh, and then of course the horizontal stabilizer, you're going to have to put it on your own, but you can look at Wikipedia for reference for that, it's a fairly simple stabilizer. And the landing gear, I'll just open up the, the what you call it, craft file to show you where those are and you can take a look. But J57 is the engine. and you just put it like that. It's a little bit small compared to what it's supposed to be, but there you are. 2.155 tons, which is quite a lot considering that the mass of this dry is 8.275 right now. Uh, the start mass 11, uh, sorry, the fueled mass is 11.555. Technically the empty mass is supposed to be uh, 9.5 tons, but we don't have the landing gear and we don't have the control surfaces or the horizontal stabilizer right now. So those should make up the remainder of the weight for you. Now let's take a look at the craft file that I have. So here we've got uh, 9.282 tons. So we're a little bit light, but I can actually adjust that by strengthening these control surfaces, which I made a little bit weaker initially. So yeah, at 0.85, these are pretty close to getting it to the correct empty mass. Our mass, uh, center of mass and center of lift are like that. As the fuel drains, it gets really close, but not, doesn't cross. Uh, that could take some adjustment. I mean, uh, could just move the wing back just a smidge if that turns out to be a problem. But I think it'll be all right. That's pretty much right on it. And it has the correct uh, fuel load as far as I can tell. So yeah, let's take it outside and see what happens. Now note, it does have this angle up. That's normal. That's how it is. So the, the back wheels are such that it'll have this tilt up by default. The wings themselves aren't tilted at all. Neither is the horizontal stabilizer. They're just straight out. As you can see, we've got about an hour worth of fuel. That's in theory. That's not afterburning, I don't think. Anyway, uh, throttle up. SAS, not SAS. I'm going to use atmospheric autopilot instead. 
And it, because of this uh, tilt up, it'll just sort of lift off on its own, actually. Of course, the body has the air intake on it. In order to prevent it from squirreling about, I'm gonna pull up a little bit. It tends to want to drift a little with the wheels. But as you can see, no problem with liftoff. It does have a fairly large wing for its size. To get the shininess, you need textures unlimited. It handles very well. I find that this engine is a little bit underpowered for it. I prefer the J75, which is basically the upgrade version of the J57. I mainly do my airplane stuff in KSP 1.3.1 because I can't get the, the real KSC stuff to operate correctly in any other version. So I wouldn't have the shuttle landing facility anywhere else, and I like that runway. Well, that's a nice shot. I mean, it's just a quickie model. I mean, I definitely did not put all the detailing on it. Basically used the same textures I used for the B-58. And I'll probably use the same textures. I mean, except for the little decals, basically. Um, use the same textures for the rest of the... of the Century series. So basically, the throttle setting I've got right now is the one that would get you about an hour's worth of flight time if you uh, wanted that at altitude. Okay, I'll level off here to see what it can do without the afterburners, basically. For a longer flight. I'm expecting that it can get to airliner speeds, of course. But it doesn't have a thrust to weight ratio greater than one right now. And it's not supposed to. You can see even the max thrust weight ratio doesn't reach one, so um, without the afterburners, it's not going to be able to break the speed of sound. The question is whether it can break the speed of sound at all. That's not always uh, given, as you know from my previous attempts to make planes. It's always a bit of a struggle. I've already uh, tuned the drag down on this as much as I did for the other ones, though, so there's not a whole lot more room to go. But possibly because I place the wings in symmetry, the far aerodynamics, I can add that in and it'll actually work this time? I'm not sure. We're slowly creeping up there. We're getting to the airliner speeds. We'll get there eventually, but I won't belabor it. Uh, eventually... Well, I don't know. We've sort of leveled off, I guess. We're looking at Mach 0.8 without the afterburners. And you can see fuel consumption 1 per second. But I'm gonna throttle up. Now we're at two per second. The afterburners generally double it, from what I've seen. And we will see how fast we can get now. Doesn't look like it's accelerating much though. Well, let's try and get into a dive to try and break the sound barrier. It only gets up to Mach 1.4, so it doesn't really clear the transonic region, I don't think, this plane. But yeah, this is manifestly worse than it ought to be. Let's uh, turn around and head back to the Cape. I don't think this is going to do anything good. We'll try it out with the J75 instead, maybe. At least it handles well. Maybe we can go really high and try and dive or something. But that's not how it's supposed to work. Service ceiling for it is supposed to be 15 kilometers, 50,000 feet. Okay, trying to nosedive into the KSC method of breaking the sound barrier. Let's see. Vomit, comet, or something. Well, we're technically past Mach 1. But this is all transonic, so it doesn't last. 
Well, anyway, time to land. You may want to put on air brakes. I did not. Oh, well, we're coming in fast. That's why I wanted the air brakes. It doesn't seem to have a huge amount of drag. I mean, it slows down, but... Not... Unusually. Well... Oh, we bounced. Too fast. Oh, we bounced seriously. Okay, let's go around. <laughs> okay, now... Maybe we're going slow enough? Let's get slower. Oh, come on, still a bounce up? Jeez. It's not even empty or anything. Well, maybe I should reduce lift on it. Maybe the lift is also causing more drag when we try and go supersonic. It definitely doesn't need this much lift. Oh god, look at that. I mean, we're not going that fast. Okay. This has gone pear-shaped. I don't even know where we are. Okay, um... Yeah, we'll be fine. Uh, the plane could do a little bit of work. Alright, uh, let's just try the faster engine to see if we can... or the more powerful engine to see if we can push it past Mach 1 a little bit more definitively. As you can see, the J75 does sort of fit the slot a little bit better at least. But in terms of thrust, it doesn't have that well, 109 kilonewtons. Let's see, the J57, what does it actually say in here? Um, it says 75 for it in here. So 75 versus 109. So we should get better, but we will also consume the fuel a lot faster. It's also heavier. So let me just see, J57. Uh, yeah, by like 0.55 tons. So our center of mass, when we're empty, now crosses. So we're going to have to set the wings back a bit. And probably just do that a little bit more. And we'll need to do this as well, the landing gear. I was always attach the landing gear onto the body and then tweak it out based on prior experience. Uh, well, we can sort of shove the engine a little bit in. And that's barely okay. That's, anyway, that's as far as I'm going to be able to tweak it. Let's just uh, try it out and see what happens. We'll see if we can get better performance. Well, I mean, we should get better performance. And then again, it is heavier, so, you know, I'm not going to save it. Okay, here we go again. Uh, just atmospheric autopilot, and on we go. Seems like the stall speed is much lower than it needs to be, so yeah, we can get off pretty quickly. This certainly has a better climb rate. This time it maxes out at a thrust to weight ratio greater than 1. Okay, we're at a pretty good altitude. Let's accelerate. Okay, that's Mach 1. So, and I didn't have to go down precipitously to get there, though. Probably if we wanted to get through the transonic region, we may have to. But we'll try. We'll just keep uh, burning like this and see how fast it gets. I'll put on some physical time warp. So yeah, might need the upgraded version, the J75 for now in order to get the required thrust to make this perform properly. Could always fit a larger engine or rocket engines if you wanted to. That's up to you. Um, yeah. These are modular fuel tanks, so you should be able to empty it and fill it up with whatever fuel you want. Won't last very long with rocket fuel, though. Okay, it seems to be stuck at Mach 1.3, so... We'll descend. 
Again, the maximum Mach speed for this was Mach 1.4. I'm stuck on 1.07. I don't know. Even now, having trouble coaxing it as fast as it's supposed to be able to go. Well, I'll try and put the FAR model on it and see what happens, but for now I'll leave it at this version here uh, for your enjoyment. I'll have the F-101 done pretty soon, too. I like the F-101 better, to be honest. It has two of the J-57 engines, and it's not double the mass, so hopefully it'll have an uh, easier time of breaking through the sound barrier and everything. Though I doubt it'll get to its uh, rated Mach of Mach 1.7, that's much faster than this. It's a more complicated plane to make too. Anyway, so with this F100, I'll say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.